Hey guys and welcome back to Planet 40k. In today's video we're going to be doing a 1000 point Necron list for the new chapter approved book, The Arcs of Omen. So now when you're taking the new detachment from this new chapter approved book, you just need 3 of 1 battlefield roll. So if you've got 3 elite selections for example, and a HQ of course, that will fulfill your compulsory units within that detachment. You can have 1 HQ with 3 troops, 1 HQ with 3 heavies, whatever you want as long as you've got 3 of 1 battlefield roll. And yeah, the rest is almost open. Not quite open, there are some sort of restrictions to the lists. And the detachment itself doesn't actually cost us any command points whatsoever. So let's begin the list. In fact, we need to talk about the Dynasty Code, don't we? So, Tale of the Conquerors and the Relentless Expansions thing is not a thing anymore. You can't take both of those together. So I'm going to stick with the Nehillac Dynasty. That's the dynasty I like to play the most out of the six generic ones anyway. So we're going with the Nehillac Dynasty. So we're having objective secured, as well as that minus one, well, Minus 1 AP weapons go to 0 AP weapons if you're in your deployment zone. So that's the dynasty I've selected today. Let's move on to the HQ. So for the HQ, we're going to go with one HQ today and it's going to be my beloved Technomancer. Now the Technomancer is 70 points for the model. Now I'm going to be taking it with the Canoptic Cloak so I can heal D3 lost wounds to a unit within the same dynasty code of course. And further to add to this, I'm going to be taking a Cryptic Arcana which is the Prismatic Offshoot Cape. Of you, of you, I can't say it, and you know I can't say it. Of you, Catron, whatever that is, 15 points for that. So, in total, we're looking at 85 points for the Technomancer with the Cryptic Arcana. Now, we're also going to spend a command point to buy the Veil of Darkness Relic as well. But I'm going to explain all that, what we're going to be doing with that later in the video. So, then we get on to the part where we need three of a single battlefield roll to make the list legal. And I'm going to go into something that's probably not as expected as you may think because. I'm going with troops. Now you don't need troops anymore, you can just completely ignore the troops, but I'm going to go with something a little bit different. Well, for me it is anyway. Maybe for you, I don't know. But for me this has worked out quite nicely. So I'm going to be going with the Necron Warriors and I'm going to go with 3 units of 10 of them. That comes to 330 points because Necron Warriors had been reduced from 13 points to 11 points per model. So 110 points per unit, 330 points for my troop selections. Lovely. So I'm going to be taking them with the Gorse Reapers, Nest Strength 5 minus 2 AP 1 damage, and that's really good now, especially because Armour of Contempt isn't a thing anymore, so the minus 2 AP is minus 2 AP. Also, they're going to be re-rolling ones to reanimate, which is quite a nice little bonus too, isn't it? Now, they're already a troop selection, so they're going to have objectives secured naturally, so within the Nihilak Dynasty, they're going to count as two models when holding down an objective, to so double bubble on the obsec there. So as far as I'm aware, at this moment in time, the Arcs of Omen... Detachment is legal, we've got our HQ and we've got our 3 from 1 single battlefield roll which is the troops. So we're legal. So we're going to go into our dedicated transport selections. You probably guessed where this was going because of the unit sizes of the Necron Warriors. But we're going with the dedicated transports and we're going to go with 3 Ghost Arcs. Not 1, not 2, but 3 Ghost Arcs, so 10 Warriors per Ghost Arc. Now the Ghost Arcs also got a price reduction recently. They're only now 115 points per Ghost Arc which I think is an absolute bargain. They're very fast becoming one of my favourite units within the Codex. So for 3 Ghost Arcs, 345 points and 1 Necron Warrior unit per Ghost Arc. Nice. So what do I like about the Ghost Arcs? Why are they in this list? So first of all, you need to deploy the Warriors within the Ghost Arc because of the rules. The rules have changed quite recently. Now, Ghost Arcs with objectives secured are crazy good. I mean, they've got 14 wounds, quantum shielding. They've got the quick movement of 12 inches. They can fly. They've got the same sort of fire damage output as 10 Necron Warriors with the Flayers, or Gorse Flayers rather. And even if they do go bang and they get destroyed, you've still got 10 Warriors inside that can come out. Okay, you are rolling ones and they may die when they pop out, and hopefully you can get them out because sometimes you get squeezed into a position where you can't actually disembark the Warriors that were within the Ghost Arc. But yeah, crazy good with Objective Secure, especially at 1k. There's not going to be much that can pop 1, 2, or even 3 Ghost Arcs within a 1k game. So at incursion level, yeah, they are pretty good. Then we move on to the next slot, which is the fast attack. I don't ever leave home without my Canoptic Scarabs, and I've gone with two units of three minimum units of Canoptic Scarabs there. 45 points per unit, that's 90 points, of course. Now, I'm going to be using these in the way I don't normally use them. Normally, I use them to push forward, get the objectives early, especially with objectives secured, you're stealing points, treasures of Aeons, things like that. But for this list, they're actually going to be staying back. And the reason for them to stay back is I've got the Ghost Arcs doing the forward, you know, stealing objectives and things like that. This Canoptic Scarabs can stay on the home objectives, all the objectives that are close to our deployment zone. They're very hard to be seen because they've got flat bases anyway, so you can hide them quite comfortably. 
minus one AP weapons will become zero AP weapons as well, so that helps slightly with their poor armor save with the six plus. Potentially get a five plus of light cover, and you can potentially also use them to screen out deep striking units that are coming in from turn two onwards, or potentially even block players from stopping you from scoring purge the vermin if they want to get into your quarters or your deployment zone. So yeah, nice, easy, cheap units that can stay in your home deployment zone and hopefully screen out enemy models. Then we come on to the final unit within this 1k list and I'm going to go with my beloved heavy, well, locust heavy destroyers. Three of them for 150 points. They're going to be going with the gorse destructors. Don't ever leave a home without those either. Now, long-term viewers are going to know my synergy here, with, especially with the technomancer. So what do I do with the technomancer? With the Canoptic Cloak, I can heal one of these models' D3 lost wounds. With the Rites of Reanimation, I can bring back one of these models. Now, because there's three models within the unit, I've got access to the Lookout Sir ability, so my Technomancer cannot be targeted. Now, you may be thinking, well, as soon as one of these Locust Heavy Destroyers goes, you've lost the Lookout Sir ability because you've only got two models, and potentially the Technomancer can be shot at. You'd be correct. However, don't forget we've got that Cryptic Arcana, which I'm not going to try and pronounce again. Whereas the Technomancer needs to be the closest eligible unit in order to be shot. Which he won't be because he'll be within three of this triangled unit of three Locust Heavy Destroyers. So my opponent is likely going to want my Technomancer dead. And the only real way of doing it is by getting into close combat, into engagement range of the Technomancer. By that point of the game, this is where the Veil of Darkness really comes out. See you later. So yeah, I would hope my Locust Heavy Destroyers stick around for most of the game because of the Technomancer. Ideally I want two units of Locust Heavy Destroyers, but this is 1k, you can't have everything, right? So that's my 1000 point list, let's get on to some tactics, well we spoke about most of the tactics throughout the video, but we need to talk about the command protocols as well as the secondary objective selections. So as for command protocols, the protocol of Undying Legions is the one that I'm going to be selecting as my all game protocol. And the reason for it is as follows, so directive number one, you get plus one wound for using your living metal ability. That's going to be very useful when you've got three ghost arcs on the battlefield. With 40 wounds, quantum shielding, they're quite hard to shift as it is. Having an extra wound from living metal means two per turn on every single ghost arc. I think that's pretty good. And once all the ghost arcs do get destroyed, I can then jump to directive two, which is a reroll for my reanimation rolls. I'm not banking on that one, don't get me wrong. When you've got 10 Necromores per unit, they likely will go down quite fast. So that's my protocol that I'm going to be using all game. Now as for the secondary objectives, I'm going to go slightly boring with this because we kind of have to. They're still pretty good, even though all of our secondary objectives have been nerfed, they're still selectable at this present time. So the first one is going to be Ancient Machineries. Now unfortunately the Ghost Arts cannot do Ancient Machineries anymore. That's part of the nerf for that secondary objective. So I will be relying on my Canoptic Scarabs as well as my Necron Warriors, potentially even the Locust Heavy Destroyers, to be doing those actions. Bearing in mind that at some point in the game, I'm going to have the Protocol of Sudden Storm active, where I can do actions and still fire. The second one is going to be Treasures of Aeons. Now, we're objective secured, so yeah, this shouldn't be too difficult. Now, it has been nerfed to 2 points, 3 points, and 4 points, whereas previously it was 2 points, 3 points, and 5 points, I believe. So yeah, a slight nerf in terms of maxing out the secondary objective, but yeah, we're objective secured. We shouldn't have too much of a problem, especially with the Ghost Arcs, right? Now hold the four guys, I've had to edit this into this video because I previously had selected Purge the Vermin for this 1000 point list and since doing this video I've realised there's been a huge nerf that I've completely missed upon and yeah, Purge the Vermin now, units don't need to wholly be within our quarters so in theory a single enemy unit could just go into the centre of the battlefield and that would be covering all four of our quarters and potentially even our deployment zone in some of the missions. So I definitely won't be choosing Purge the Vermin, so I've had to edit that part out of this video. And instead I'm going to go with Behind Enemy Lines. Now I think this one's one of our better options now for Battlefield Supremacy. And with our Ghost Arcs in particular, because they're moving 12 inches and then you're throwing out some Necromorrows on the side, that's going to be two units behind enemy lines if you can get to it. Now there's also been a little bit of a buff with Behind Enemy Lines as well, because if you've got one single unit behind enemy lines, it's actually three victory points instead of two. So that's what I'm going to go with for the third secondary objective in this list. It's going to be behind enemy lines and not purge the vermin. Don't be selecting that one until they patch it up. So guys, this is my 1000 point Necron list for the new chapter approved Arcs of Omen. Give it a go. Try it out. I'm having quite a bit of success with it at the moment. Ghost Arcs, I think, are the in thing right now because of that point reduction. Now, I was tempted to have a fourth Ghost Arc within the list and have, say, a Locust Lord go in it because you just need a Dynasty Infantry character which will fill the transport up. 
but then I wouldn't have been able to take the Locust Heavy Destroyers. So I was on the fence whether to do that or not, but for this list I'm going to be sticking with the Technomancer as well as the three Locust Heavy Destroyers. Maybe if I was to upgrade it to a 2000 point list I could be bringing out some more Ghost Darks. We'll have to wait and see for that video. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.